Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hopefully all is well in the world. Back today to do another reaction here from America in my daughter's bedroom. Yeah guys, all right. So today's content is gonna be reacting to 21 things in the US that puzzle most foreigners. <laughs> have not watched this video yet. I gotta just be a better YouTuber. Maybe I should, I don't know, watch it. I like to surprise myself. I mean, let's go ahead and say what we're going to possibly healthcare we're gonna talk about in there. Possibly um our taxes. There's a lot of things, guys. I mean, I'm looking at it on the beginning and it's already got some bathroom stall doors. So, this couldn't be educated or it could be so left field, who knows what we're talking about. But anyways, we're gonna watch it together. We're gonna react to it. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what they say about us, okay? Alright. Well, you may have lived in the United States your whole life. Nope. Without realizing that something totally normal for you seems bizarre to people from other parts of the world. Who knew that munching on fried pickles in a highly air-conditioned room was so outlandish? From fried pickles. Well, here are some other highly entertaining Americanisms I've got. Americanisms. Let's oh, we got word, guys. Number 21. Sales tax is a guessing game. Guess what? When you go shopping Sales in the U.S. Tax. and see a price tag that says $14.88. Don't expect to pay $14.88 nope. at the register. Sales tax is not included in the price of nope. a Nope. And since this tax can vary from state to That's state, true. figuring out your total can turn into the ultimate mental math challenge. Why? In many European countries, the sales tax is already included in the price. It's known That's as true. a value added tax, or mm. VAT. Yeah. Number 20. Let's go ahead and pause right there, guys. So let's talk about that for just a second. First of all, ain't no American sitting around getting out no calculator to do their taxes. You know your home state tax usually six percent, five percent, whatever it may be, and you pretty much have a general, you know, a general idea of what you're going to be paying at the end. <laughs> we ain't sitting there typing like, hey, let's go six percent. Most folks already know what the end value game's going to be. Um, they did say I loved it when I lived in the UK, and what you saw is what you got, pretty much. Those taxes are still added into the UK, but is it, it's a better way of doing it. 20 pounds, it's 20 pounds, you know, that the tax is already added. I loved, absolutely loved that feature. Now that I've came back to America, I don't understand why we don't adopt that part of it. But that VAT that they're talking about in this video, for all you Americans that don't know, that VAT is 20%. Okay, some states here, guys, don't even do sales tax. So there's some, there are some states that just say, hey, you know, we're not going to play that ball game and there's no sales tax. There are some as low as 2%. There are some like Cali that's as high as like 7 and 8%. I mean, just depends on the living that's going on around there. The different thing, but that 20% VAC is ridiculous. Like if you're buying bigger items, like when we went to buy our sofa and this, you know, this big vats tax stone at the end i was like oh my gosh like what is that extra 200 pounds 300 pounds at the bottom for quickly you learn that that's that's that vat tax but that's not necessarily going on with clothes or simple things it's those bigger items that you get so we could both go back and forth you know i don't understand a vat tax and why 20 percent would ever seem normal but it is a thing do i like that the tax is already added yes do i like the vat tax no. Okay, let's keep going. Number 20, workaholics. workaholics. A lot of Americans don't feel the need to take long vacations. Feel the need, so I do. let vacation and sick hours pile up without ever using them. What? Plus, Who? Give me some. Employers only give you two weeks out of the year. But in a lot of other countries, like Brazil or Finland, Finland. workers are encouraged to take an average of 30 days of vacation. That's good. Wow. Maybe I should take some time off. 30 days of vacation, guys, you get regrouped, you get reminded. I know they're not taking 30 days all at one time, but yeah, 30 days vacation is awesome, not gonna lie. Like most places, whenever you go in, unless you're working part-time, you don't get those benefits, but if you're working a full-time job, you're straight off the gate getting at least a week or two. Plus, you also get sick time. You don't necessarily get paid for sick time in America, but you can take that time off without it. you getting a ding or against your work record. Um, 
I don't know who in America where they're getting this from doesn't want to take the time off. I mean, I know that we're workaholics. Definitely, we're go, go, goers. How big, how much better can it be? Blah stuff. But, I mean, even in the health profession, I guess I could say it's kind of true. I mean, that part's kind of hard because, like, I did. I worked there so long that I had a lot of benefits and... Um, I did have like a month, of, you know, accrued vacation time and sick time and, you know, if I needed to be off, I needed to be off and that was fine, but I did have doctors that were spoiled rotten and they did not, like a certain group of doctors did not want me to take off unless they took off and I don't know if that necessarily happens in the UK, but that got kind of frustrating. I did get it. I'm the one that had spoiled them to that stuff and they wanted, you know, that's just, they wanted me as their nurse and I get that point, but at the same time, I didn't want to have to wait on my vacation to match up with their vacation because, I'm, you know, that didn't always happen. I mean, they were cool. They were like, yes, fine, Michelle, but if you can make ours match. So, I mean, it's just different culture. It really is on that part, guys. So, all right, let's continue on with this. Or perhaps I'll just keep waiting. 19. It's not a party without red solo cups. Of course they're mentioning the red States, solo cups. This red plastic cup I understand why it's so hard for you guys to understand the red solo cups. But other countries like you've got fake spoons and forks. What's the big deal? The same thing. People in the UK, for example, don't use red solo cups at get-togethers. They have to go to a special yeah, website using tea to glasses. the cups for American-themed parties. Who knew? Number 18. Now, wait a second. Front. They ain't nobody in the UK. Y'all really ordering red solo cups? Like, y'all should have just told me while I was there. I'd have said something outside my door and y'all could have come and got them. Nobody's doing that. I mean, okay, in the comment section, tell me if you're ordering red solo cups. Because I don't think it's something you guys really care for. I don't understand what the big deal is. Um, I mean, definitely for having, like, dinners and stuff. My mom's big on that, too. Like, she don't really care for to use a solo cup. She's American. And she's like, no, you should really use a glass. And that, I just like my tea better out of a glass. And sweet tea, guys. Out of a glass. And so, I mean, I get that. And she says it tastes different either, even. But I don't know. If you're a big family like us, there's five of us. You've seen my red solo cups. I'm like, you better rinse some things out. <laughs> Reuse them. We do recycle them. So, I'm not sure what the big Everything. Is. Whether we don't deep fry Oreos, everything, guys. Y'all make out like we have no great chefs here in America. Recipes first appeared in I mean, but there is a lot of food fries. Cookbooks, as far back as the 1200s, and the Greeks were frying food in olive oil way back in the 5th century BCE. Okay. But as America does with many things, they've adopted a tradition from far off lands and took it up a notch. Or five. 17. Get everything you need right at the pharmacy. If you're not from yeah. the U.S., it may be puzzling to walk into a pharmacy and see aisles and aisles of over-the-counter meds, toys, makeup, clothes, and even groceries. Unlike in other countries where pharmacies sell medicine and medical supplies exclusively, true. the ones in the U.S. are like small convenience stores mm -hmm. where you can Run grab that magazines, fun like that. Tylenol, and a frozen pizza in one fell swoop. Frozen pizza? I don't know about that. 16. So there is places like CVS, Walgreens, and places like that that would be called a pharmacy here in America. But yeah, they do sell other things. I mean, toilet paper, makeup, but that's not so far-fetched. There's places in the UK that do that same, not necessarily frozen pizza. Yeah, I think I did see at my CVS there was frozen pizza and milk. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Maybe they're like a one-stop shop. Anyways, I mean, that's just grown with American culture because there's definitely... There's definitely still little pharmacies that you go and just get your medicine here in America. But one thing was, I think we were in Paris. And um, this when we first got to the UK and we were out traveling. A lot of people had said, hey, you know, well, how can you just travel so much? A lot of places don't speak English, which they do. Um, but, you know, how do y'all just travel so much and feel comfortable? This was the one time that I was kind of like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Christian had got super sick and his fever was super high and it was late at night. So I went downstairs and I was like, you know, trying to speak. And usually your little people at your hotel can speak pretty good English anyways. And I was like, um, I need Tylenol or, you know, 
actually the UK calls it numerous different things. It's not just Tylenol. So I went through a list of names that he could possibly call it for Tylenol. And I was like, is that over the counter? Is that, and it just was not something I could go even get over the counter. Something as simple as Tylenol in that country. I had to go to what was called a pharmacist. And it truly was. It was nothing but pharmacist there and the medicine in the back. And thank goodness she was very educated and she could understand what I needed as far as Tylenol for my child, but she did. She even had to write it as a prescription, hand it to me, me hand it back to her as she's looking at me and go and refill it in the back for Christian. And this is just something that is over-the-counter Tylenol here in America. So this is not 100% related to the UK. I'm just saying as European countries, some of them are different even than the UK, but that was one thing that I was kind of like, all right, let's get brushed up on this language now in case somebody else is, you know, sick or something. <laughs> That was not the parts that I had remembered, you know, for help or anything. <laughs> it was Tylenol. But it's here now, guys. It's here now. In America, if a restaurant doesn't offer free refills on fountain drinks, it's kind of strange. It is. Everybody offers countries, it. Once you buy one beverage, it's true. that's it. Yep. France banned refills on sugary sodas back in 2017 in order to combat the current obesity epidemic. I doubt that's but it. in the U.S., the idea of free refills... I mean, if you're really trying to combat that, then you're going to need to take out all that fast food restaurants. You're going to need to take out all that pastry. Pastry we're talking about in France. Come on, get out of here. But the statement is true as far as that goes about um, refills because in America you get refills on everything. The only place we could find to get a refill in the UK was Nando's. And when we found that, we're like, ha, refill it. But... Honestly, I got so accustomed to knowing that that one glass had to last me the whole time through my meal that I, I kind of didn't drink all of it even at the end while we were living there. I would just kind of, I got to where I rationalized my drink and I knew how much I could sip before my food got there, how much I could sip with my food, <laughs> how much I would want after until it just became a thing that... I didn't want refills and then when we came back into America and they just shove them down like your glass is not even halfway empty and they're bringing you a new drink I was like stop please like you're gonna have to stop because I'm already so full from the drink alone that I'm not gonna be you know wanting to eat so it's definitely a thing when I first went over there I absolutely couldn't understand this no refill thing I mean we could all agree that that's just being cheap that's a company saving money um I mean, they they approached it as it could be, you know, um, trying to help the health. So, I mean, we could we could go back and forth with that, guys. But it is true statement. All right, let's finish. It's still alive and well. Finish this video. Fifteen. If you don't like it, return it. Whether it's an ugly sweater from Grandma or a heinous pair of earrings from an ex, if you don't like it. You can just return it. Mm -hmm. In America, I've making seen things have to used return. Like stop. Reason. I mean, the U.S. even has a national returns day in January. Conveniently, they didn't even know that. Don't care about it. You just return it if you don't like it. Well, same in the U.K. We returned it if we didn't like it. Fourteen tips for everyone: cat drivers, servers, hairdressers. So true. You gotta tip them. So true. Tips are acceptable for almost any service in the U.S. and sometimes consist of twenty. And he's about to say 25%. That's ridiculous right now. Um, I mean, they tip in the UK too. We read that they didn't, and you do. But when their little slips print off, you know, the same thing as is in America, they ask for a tip at the bottom if you're willing to give them one. I know one time we were out with Michaela's British boyfriend, and he got very offended that the tip was already included in the bill. We were in London, and he's like, no, no, no. First of all, I didn't like my service. He's like, second of all, I hadn't planned on tipping at that percent. He's like, so now you'll just take the tip out altogether. And I was like, oh my God, I'll just pay the tip. It's okay. Let's move on. Um, so I understood from his culture side that he didn't like that. But from my culture side, I was like, eh. You know, guys, here for waitresses and stuff, like I told you, they make two, now maybe $5 an hour. So I can see tipping them because that is where they make their money is actually from tips. But, and I tipped my hairdresser in the UK. It was the same thing. And, and she expected it. I mean, me and her talked. You know I talked to everybody, guys. And I was like, do other people, Brits and stuff, tip you? And she's like, yes. So we're not so far off from that stuff. When I did come back into America, what I noticed is everything now wants a tip. Like, guys, if you take your trash can out there, the trash man wants a tip. 
I'm just baffled. And it's went from this 10% tip to now it's 25 and 30%. Like for what? I done paid you for the service. What am I tipping for? I don't know. Tips got ridiculous here in America. So I can 100% agree with that um, part of it. But the UK does tip too. <laughs> Not yet. I want my tip. That's where I work, they are. That consider tipping incredibly rude, like in restaurants. Japan, when yeah. When you travel to different countries, it's important to learn their tipping. Japan's etiquette. got their own so thing going on there, guys. Anymore. Like, you can't even get in some of their restaurants if you're not my coffee to go um, one of them. With a Starbucks on every corner. We do Starbucks everywhere. See people toting around There's a lot of cost in the UK, shop, though. Commute to work and whatever else at all times of the day. But in many parts of the world, coffee's our tea. On while seated and enjoying the paper or this is what I love. You nailed it. Good job. Along with you throughout the day. That is the difference between Americans and the UK. Americans are on the go, on the go. Got to get to work. Got to get to the next thing. Got to just do, 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 do that pace of life. Where European countries, you do see, maybe it's just tourists. I don't know. Maybe the locals are not really doing that. But I love that. Every country we went into, and, and sometimes in the UK, I'm like, no, I want my coffee. I don't want to go anywhere. I want my coffee right here. I want to people watch. I like that pace of life. So I think that's awesome. I mean, sometimes I know you got to get your kids to school or whatever you're doing, and you do take it on the go. But I, I like that sitting and just... Might be due Just to the fact that coffee. the cups are huge and take longer to drink. Co the cups are the same. I mean, they're just trashing right there. Cups are the Sounds same like size. Number 12, the land of ice cold drinks. Now, speaking of drinks, if it's not a hot coffee or cocoa, then it's probably got ice in it. Tea, coffee, lemonade, soda, water. Americans like it on the rocks. That's true. If you go elsewhere in the world. That's true. Most places um, elsewhere in the world, he's probably going to say serve it at a room temp, in which they do serve it at a room temp, which is still good. You guys just can leave that lemon off. I don't understand why there's a lemon coming out every time with my um, Coke. I was like, just leave that salmonella in the back. No need to bring it to my glass and my table. <laughs> but as far as, I mean, this goes... Americans like a lot of things, guys. Like I said, from the south, it's sweet tea. It's hitting 110 degrees. Texas can hit 110. Florida can, too. I mean, I don't necessarily want room temperature drinks in it that hot. And like you said, we do like our hot beverages, too, in the wintertime. So, you know, or some of Michelle's hot tea. Um, and we don't put ice in those things. But, yeah. And, I mean, we can go back to I kind of get frustrated with the ice, too, because... You get halfway through your drink, and if you don't drink it fast enough, it gets kind of like watery taste. And I'm not necessarily a big ice person unless it's super hot, I'm super thirsty, but I would prefer my drink cold and not room temperature. So, Odds are you'll be I don't know. Your soda the ice hurts my teeth, too. Or maybe slightly refrigerated if you don't specifically ask for ice. Number 11. Keeping the AC on at all times. Oh, yes. Americans Gosh. must have an aversion to being hot. In many parts of the Different Europe, again, it's just different temps for longer as guys. As they do in the States. Here, it's expected to always have the AC blaring. And a lot of visitors find it pretty strange. And yeah, I mean, a lot of us visitors over there find it strange that it's so hot in some of these areas. But I, I can't agree with this. When we came back into America, I almost, like, the AC now, the coldness of the AC blowing on me in the car or the house, it almost hurts my body after living in a place that don't really have the AC. So I could get it if you were a Brit coming over where you're like, oh, I don't like this. I do. 100% now that I've lived abroad, I get it because I struggle with the same things now. Um, but... One time we went to Sylvania, we did go in the summertime. It was super warm there. We were trying to go to bed because at bed, bedtime's the only time, because I still like to snuggle in a blanket, is the only time I want it to be cooler in the house so I can snuggle under my blanket. I don't know. I'm weird, guys. Um, but we went to Sylvania, and it was super hot in there, and we did not sleep for that whole week. I mean, it was like a toss and turn thing. And I'm like, it's 88 degrees outside. I can't understand why they don't have some AC in here. And you couldn't even open a window. The windows were like locked or something. I don't know. Michelle was struggling on that. So there's certain times and even when we first moved to England, 
and the summers were getting hot. I was like, you know, my husband was like, I'm going to die. This is just too hot. But we got custom to it. And just like here, I mean, guys, you could come over into Florida and, you know, we could be having certain temps where we still have long sleeves on and you guys could come over here in your shorts and stuff. We just get adjusted to temps different ways and I think that's all that really is. But the oh, AC, come on. It makes sense. I get it now. If you're cold, you can layer up. Right. If you're hot, all you can do is suffer and complain. Right, it's true. Number 10. Looking at dollars is a snooze fest. I remember going to Europe for the first time. British and money is so much prettier. Notes look like Monopoly money. And I guess a lot of countries have bills of different colors and mm -hmm. sizes depending on the value, like Swedish krona and Russian rubles. Right. But not in the U.S., it's all so much bands, prettier. Baby. Sure, tens look a little yellowy. Eh, it's all ugly. And Benjamin seemed blue. The only thing I don't like is I didn't like that many Still, pounds. US like the round coin that being a pound equal to like our dollar. Gosh, gosh, guys. My pocketbook, as I guess this commercial, my pocketbook can't handle all that change. And like that's what I use for parking. I was like, huh? <laughs> that's something that drove me nuts. Number nine, giving a thumbs up. In America, even little kids know a thumbs up means good, good job, job. way yeah. to go, or anything positive like that. Right, yay. But if you travel to Greece or the Middle East and give this common American gesture, you probably won't make too many friends. Hey, how about giving this video kind of like the peace sign? A useful tip. <laughs> Guys, if you're American, Number look eight, up the peace sign for the, the UK. Writing conundrum. So many visitors to the U.S. get really confused by the month, day, year thing. Because most parts of the world write the day, then oh, the month, then drives finally the year. There's no drives clear nuts. historical reason why the U.S. insists on writing the day differently, but we just do. Number seven. That is true, guys. I am a month, day, year kind of person. Then I married military, and it's, it goes by the other way, and hubby writes it the other way, and I have to sit there and look at it for a minute, and I'm like, wait, that don't even make sense, what he just wrote. So I have kind of got used to writing it both ways, or reading it both ways, but when I did go to the UK, and I wrote it the wrong way, and I was signing papers, it was for a house or something, <laughs> they corrected me, they're like, you can't write it that way here, and we don't understand that, so <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. Free baby, baby showers. Baby showers. Many cultures celebrate a new baby coming into the right, world, yay. but America is one of the few places that does this before the baby actually gets here. In East Asian countries, for instance, when the baby first comes, new baby are held once the baby is born. Okay. As doing otherwise is seen as bad luck. And we still have people come over at our house after. How are you? You still have people come over at your house after you have a baby. You just don't want them all in your house, and you're super tired, and you're trying to get adjusted. Um, but people still stop in, but it's nice right before the baby, and they always bring the baby gifts, uh, you know, it's just a helping hand of new moms-to-be. Hello. Sure, people ask each other how they're doing in other countries, but Americans often use this phrase as a replacement for hey or hello. It doesn't even require a real response. People just answer with fine thanks, even if they're in a horrible mood or had a terrible day. Yeah, because, number five. you know, honestly, the person that you're passing in the street don't necessarily want to hear if you're having a horrible day. Sometimes people like me will tell you either way, but, um, I mean, I could easily say that the UK, I didn't understand that you are right. Like, I mean, why are you asking me how, I don't know, I got used to it. But it was still something that I questioned six years later, especially for my British girlfriends that would ask me as soon as they saw me, you are right. Like, why wouldn't I be all right? Do I look like I'm not all right this morning? I'm smiling this morning. Like, I don't know. And I guess I just maybe took the you all right literal because we're like usually, hey, how are you? Hey, y'all, or something like that. It's just, I don't know, it's an opening statement. So I didn't understand the you all right thing either. But installs that aren't so private. I hear so much about these bathroom like styles. Who cares? Like, do you really care? I don't know. Americans don't either, of course. But the fact that bathroom stall doors often reveal as much as your entire lower leg. And it's true. And the UKs do come all the way to the floor, which is nice. As to why there's this big and so you won't stand there so long. Here. They don't want you to get comfortable. You need to do your business and move on. Ventilation. <laughs> Just saying. Number four. No one uses their inside voice. A lot of my friends who are visiting or moved to the U.S. tell me that locals speak so loud compared to other countries. Whether it's talking on your cell phone or chatting with a friend over lunch, 
Americans seem to really like projecting their voice. I don't know. Maybe we just want to make sure we're heard. It's all about choices. Walk into any grocery store aisle, and you'll notice at least 10 different options for cookies, crackers, or cereal. People in the UK don't have these many options for food, and you'll almost never find anything in grape flavor there. That's true. The grape flavor is true you? because they replace it with the black currant. But seriously, y'all, like, are y'all seriously <laughs> talking about there's not a big selection of biscuits? Biscuits go with tea, like... There's big selections. Now, the one thing I can't agree with that on the cereal, there's huge selection of cereal, just as much as America has for cereal. But I thought a lot of their cereal tastes the same. Like, Americans have got all these flashy, fruity, just blah, blah, blah. But um, it is definitely less, I don't know, there's just healthier tasting. <laughs> and it kind of all tastes healthy. So, that was the one thing I noticed kind of different on that one. All right, let's finish this. The back seat of a cab. A when cab. getting into a cab, it's customary in the States to scoot on into the back seat. But in countries like New Zealand and Australia, riding anywhere but shotgun can be a little rude. I ain't getting up front with my cabbie. That classic yeah. American smile. In the U.S., <laughs> people aren't afraid to be nice and show their right. curly whites all the time. And according to a 2015 study at Brown University, because America has always been a very diverse country. Very. It forced people to smile at each other more since they couldn't always communicate with language. True. It's just one more I guess I could say that being true. As to why Americans tend to smile more than people in other places do. Or maybe we're just, it's kind. You know, friendlier. Thanks. Whether you're from the U.S. or not, <laughs> can you add any more strange Americanisms to the list? Let me oh, know we could. We could. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like. All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna turn that screen recorder off there. That smiling part, I can, we could say, who knows? I mean, America is very, very diverse. I mean, there's a lot of languages that are spoke here. A lot of people talk about America so simple mind, guys. Like that, that to me is the craziest thing I'd ever heard because. I mean, we could go up the street and just get a whole different language here. America truly is like, I don't know, I loved London and I loved how much culture and diversity was within London. The whole of the UK is not like that. Well, you take London and you can pretty much put that as the whole of America because there is that much diversity all through America. And I mean, I guess you could be polite and everybody kind of understands no matter what language you're speaking, hello or a smile and a wave. Um, I don't know that that's why mine does that because that would say that that's a fake thing. And it's just almost like on a cue of, hey, mine truly comes from my heart. Like I'm truly just, hey, how are you? I don't, so I don't know, that's just who I am. So I couldn't really answer that question on that. Definitely, like I had some British girlfriends and they're like, just, oh my goodness, you just speak to everybody. So it definitely was something that, uh, you know, British people don't necessarily do. As far as being loud or, you know, I guess maybe I'm loud, but then you could take my same family and my mom and Michaela and Carol, no, Michaela's loud. My mom and Caroline both are so soft spoken. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Like, what? So we're not all just loud. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know on that, guys. But that was fun. Some things, I mean, I can understand everything that's coming from there. And those are kind of fun now because I can relate to it both ways and kind of tell you what I think one versus the other or what it's for. I didn't want to spend a whole video like going into each one. I honestly could have spent a whole video taking just like the AC and let's break it down. Um, but that was just a quick little video to kind of compare the things. Hopefully you guys enjoyed whatever videos I'm doing these days and just wait to see what I'll do next. Bye. What's my on Italian video and Twitter? Thank you. And I was somewhere throwing Twitter in, right? Like I do have Twitter guys. Mm -hmm. I think it is just shell 36 I don't know, but I hardly ever get on Twitter, so I'm not really sure. But thanks, Guy, for shooting out my Twitter. It's my Instagram, my TikTok. My TikTok, they don't like me right now. Okay, you're I, getting arrested. I, I know, how dare they? Like, I'm the number one person to dislike on TikTok. It doesn't matter what I do. I can show you a cute puppy on TikTok, and they're going to be like, that's just wrong, and that's just... <laughs>
again. Oh, I know. All right, guys. We're going to see you in the next one, though. Bye. Bye.